has uh, been a, a huge progress made in the field of breast cancer in the last years. Um, what uh, were the biggest breakthroughs? What has become clear is the enormous heterogeneity of breast cancer. Something we knew, we knew it from the clinic, we knew it from the pathologist, and then we knew it from expression profiling studies, the five subtypes, four, five, six subtypes, but now we are learning that it's even much more diverse. And this diversity is not something just the fact that it is like that, but it has clinical relevance, it has clinical implications. So this means that we will need to go to a future where each breast cancer subtype is recognized as such. And perhaps we have to talk about 30 diseases, the number is still open, but it is clinically relevant and it all is a challenge from the pathological point of view. We need more molecular pathology to to differentiate these subgroups, something which is still in its infancy, but which will certainly transform the field completely. What is the importance of targeted therapies in the field? Well, certainly there. I mean, if you look at the, the different clinical trials, uh, for example, the, 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 the Everolimus, the Affinitor study in, in patients progressive under a non-steroidal aromatase inhibitor, there at least it's a very active combination. We learned that. But it was a more or less homogeneous population, patients being progressive after. Many other studies which have not been selected, not selected on clinical grounds and not on molecular grounds, have failed. So the progress for targeted therapy will only be possible if we really choose the correct population. It's easier said than done, but we at least have to make that attempt. And those studies who've made that attempt have been, well, more successful in general terms. So that's something we, we clearly need to do. We have the challenge of combination of targeted agents, which is certainly for small molecules a difficult point problem with, with point of regard of toxicity. But if you look at the combination of double anti HER2 therapies and the efficacy it results in, then we certainly need to go to that route and trying to delineate those patient populations who are at least a priori most uh, probable to benefit from, from these uh, strategies. Okay, we thank you very much, uh, Dr. Davis. Thank you.